Hello friends, welcome to a relaxing and cozy afternoon in my life. I started out by trying out a new muffin recipe called raspberry buttermilk muffins. First off, I made the streusel topping. You just need half a cup of flour, six tablespoons of sugar, a pinch of salt and three tablespoons of butter and mix that together and set it aside. For the muffin batter, you need one cup of white sugar, half a cup of butter, two eggs, half a cup of buttermilk, a quarter cup of sour cream, and one teaspoon vanilla. Then mix that all together and set it aside. You'll need to take another bowl for the dry ingredients and add two cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. Once you have that mixed all together, you can go ahead and add that to the liquid ingredients. Of course, the recipe will be in the description so that you can follow the exact instructions. The recipe called for fresh raspberries and that definitely would have been ideal if I had them on hand, but all I had were frozen and that worked out just fine. Um, so you wanna add two cups of raspberries to the batter and mix that all up and then just go ahead and fill your muffin pan. Once that's done, you can sprinkle a little bit of the streusel topping over each one of the muffins and then bake it at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for six minutes and then turn the oven temperature down to 350 degrees and the recipe says to bake it for an additional 12 minutes but that definitely was not long enough in my oven so I ended up probably baking them for 15 to 18 minutes at 350. Today is just going to be more of a I don't know, cozy afternoon. I've been working on baking some muffins and I cannot wait to taste test them. I'm just gonna let them cool off a little bit. They smell amazing. I just took them out of the oven and I cannot wait to taste them. But for the rest of the afternoon, I'm probably gonna work on some sewing. I'm gonna show you what I've been working on. It's this beautiful cotton and linen dress that I'm making with buttons all the way down the front. I'm gonna show you what the material is like. It's just so pretty. I'm so pumped about this dress. Um, everything is done except I have to make all the buttonholes, which I'm only gonna make till about here and then the rest are just gonna be fake and I'm gonna have them just be sewn shut because I'm not really good at making buttonholes or I haven't done a lot of them, so yeah, I wanna just minimize that as much as possible. Um, but before I start with working on that, I am going to make a latte. I've been really enjoying this one recipe. It's like more of a healthy, or I shouldn't say healthy, it's more nourishing. Um, I put like an egg yolk and collagen in there and I've been loving it. So I wanted to share the recipe with you. Okay, I know raw egg yolks in a latte does not sound the most appetizing but did you know that there are a lot of benefits to consuming raw egg yolks they contain a lot of vitamins and nutrients like vitamin a b12 d e they also have calcium and iron magnesium potassium zinc etc and it just helps with things like boosting the immune system and so many more good things. I'm going to link an Instagram post down below if anyone is interested in learning a few more details about that. Um, but for the latte, I use one raw egg yolk and I mix that together with a scoop of collagen and a, about a tablespoon of sweetener such as honey or maple syrup. And then I mix in a double shot of espresso. If you want less caffeine, you can just use one espresso shot. And then some milk, preferably raw milk. I steam that and just pour it over top and it's so delicious and it just makes me feel so much better about having a latte knowing that there are actually some benefits to it. I decided to do a quick little taste test before I get into the sewing. I thought it would be yummy to eat it with my latte together. They are so incredibly soft. Ooh. 
moment of truth. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of raspberries in here. Makes it pretty gooey. I had to start by taking a bunch of the buttons off since they were sewn on to the wrong side. For some reason, I guess I just got carried away while sewing on the buttons and did not think that I was putting them on the wrong side. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this was kind of a frustrating process. I did a lot of practicing on some scraps and it seemed super easy at first, like it was working great on the scraps and then I would try to do it on the dress and it would not turn out and I had to keep taking them out. And so it was just a whole thing and I had to kind of walk away from it for <laughs> about an hour or so um, because I just, I was getting so frustrated and I did not want to let it ruin my day. So I just took a little breather for a while, relaxed a bit and came back and did a lot more practicing and I ended up getting it all figured out, got all eight buttonholes sewn on and they turned out great definitely not perfect by any means you can tell I'm a little bit of a beginner but I mean the button basically covers it up right so it wasn't a big deal quite the project making those buttonholes even though it was only eight buttonholes but it still took me a long time to figure it all out I don't know it kept messing up and then I would have to take it out and practice on some scraps again and yeah it was just a whole thing but I am very happy with how it turned out um, so I just have buttonholes down till a little past the waistline and then I also just went and sewed it shut all the way down till where the buttons are going to stop. I just left that part open. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is just put the rest of the buttons on top of here. These are not gonna be, you, you won't be able to open it all the way down. So I'm just gonna finish putting the buttons on and this dress is gonna be done. I'm gonna go fit it on and I'll show you guys the finished product. love how this dress turned out. I was definitely going for a more vintage look and I think I achieved that. Um, I also made this little belt here um, that just completely comes off if like I can wear it either way. I just thought that would be kind of fun and I did like a little detail on the sleeve. It's just very slightly gathered with a little cuff and the top is gathered just a tiny bit and it gives it a lot more room to like move my arms. I love that. Um, but yeah, overall I'm just so happy with how it turned out. One more beautiful piece of material that I want to make myself a dress out of. Um, this one is a hundred percent cotton. It's some people would even I think they call it gauze material. Um, and yeah, it's just gonna be so so comfortable. It's super light, and yeah, I have. Um, another kind of challenging plan for this one. I want to make the bodice. Possibly I want to make the bodice into like a smocked bodice or Shirt or sheer. I don't know how to say that but I, um, Hopefully, you know what I mean. I think it's gonna be so fun to do um, But yeah, I am just so impressed with how my sewing project turned out today. I Yeah, it was very easy until the buttonholes, but that's just because I almost never do buttonholes but I found a very helpful tutorial and it just happened to be like exactly 
she was using exactly the same type of um, machine as I was. I have the Janome HD 3000 and um, so it was super helpful to find a tutorial that was exactly for the like for my sewing machine. So in case anyone else has that sewing machine, I'll link that tutorial in the description. Um, it was very helpful to me. She just made it look super easy. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna end the video here. It is time for me to start making dinner and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I cannot wait to see you next time.